Mishnah says, in, we're in Joshua chapter 10, verse 4, we are dealing with the case of, just to catch you up, we are dealing with the uh, kings, the Gibeonites have made a, a peace treaty with the, the, the Jews, Joshua and his people. They have been bamboozled, but nonetheless, they, they are going to maintain the peace treaty. And the other nations who are in that area, the other non-Jewish nations in that area, are angry with the Gibeonites, and they're, they're going to make war on the Gibeonites. Hmm. So king, the king of Jerusalem, Adonit Tzedek, is calling all his other four friends, all of the, the kings of the area, and in chapter in verse four it says, "I'll do a lot of is when come up to me and help me." Vinaka and give on, and we will smite uh, give on. Kishlima at Yeshua at the et Israel because they have, because they have made peace with Joshua and uh, and all of Israel. So that's why we're going to smite them. He's asking everybody to come together and to help him get the job done, okay? Because he's angry with them. So he's, Malvin says, Anakeh, we will smite. Because after all the kings gathered and they agreed to fight, so now they're going to, uh, so they're going to uh, establish, as it were, the kingdom and 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 they want to, they want help to defeat their enemies. That's what they're going to do. Is that word, uh, is that Maka? And then, and then this is uh, future? Vinak, Vinaka? Yes. Uh, the, that's why I said we will smite. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you also have a Vav. It's not a Vav conversive at that point. That's a regular Vav because there's a Shva under the Vav. Mm-hmm. So that's how you know that it remains, that the word remains in the future. Yeah. Okay, so the next verse is Ve'e Asfu. And they gathered, and the five kings uh, and the five kings got, uh, came together, namely Malche Hamari, Melech Yisrael, Melech Hebron, Melech Hamut, Melech Lachish, Melech Eglon. The five kings got together, namely the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron. The king of Yarmut, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, they and all of their camps, Vayachanu al Givon, and they encamped against Givon, Vayelachamu aleha, and they are going to battle, and they went to battle against them. Okay, any questions? No? Doesn't have to be so. <laughs> yeah, we said, we also said last week that even those places are close, namely Jerusalem to Hebron to Yarmut to Lachish, Eglon. They're all in Israel, all in the uh, Greater Israel. They're less than a day from each other. Mm-hmm. So even by walking, I was uh, I believe. And so the what we learned according to the Ramban Nachmanides was that the these kings had their palaces in Israel because that was the most, the best land, as it were. Everybody understood how important Israel was. It could have also been, by the way, you don't have to even use uh, that much of the rabbinic knowledge here. It's just, it was the crossroads. We talk about Indiana being the crossroads of America. So that was what Israel is. Israel, if you look on the map, it's really have to go through it. It's a these are great, all great trade center. These are all countries that are elsewhere. Is that correct? And, and they're just they according to the Ramban. Yes, according to the Ramban, they have countries elsewhere, but they want to maintain a stake in in this area. In Again, words, like these kings they each have their own little city state away correct. from their country. Correct. And if they if they could get a stronghold in Israel. So since it's a crossroads, everybody has to go through it, trade and everything else, it's a great way to meet people. And it really is. I mean, if you look on the map, you're going to see it's, it, it was, a, it was, and that's why Rome cared about it. That's why Greece cared about it. Because it was a crossroads. You had to, you know, 
You had to go from here to there, as they were saying, Maine. You can't get there from here? Well, no, you have to go through Israel. This may be getting tangential, but after the Romans destroyed uh, Yerushalayim, how come nothing really ever happened more than until the modern age? Just kind of laid Oh, so it says in the Torah that Hashem will send us out, but nobody else will come in. Oh. Oh. The oh. land will become inhabitable. So what the so that, that, what the Romans did was uh, historically they salted the fields so that they made it a non cultivable non cultivatable. So do we know? Do you that? say that? Is that a word? I mean, non cultivatable. Imagine so. Pragmatically, from you know, from just looking at it, couldn't grow anything. Unerable. Yeah. Unerable. Thank you. There you go. Unerable. Of just uh, of human historical knowledge. I guess, so we understand what the choice was like in terms of. Uh, just his actual historical knowledge. Do we know that this is really what happened, or why it just nothing ever grew on it? No, they, they did salt the field. Mm -hmm. Ah, we don't. We know the that. Romans salted the field. The, the Torah is not being written by by the Roman time. It was worth, and, and for the next close to two thousand years, it was worthless for anybody to try to settle. Mostly it. Mostly desert. It was desert. Yeah. Yeah, because they had killed the land. It's like yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, you're not going to grow anything there either. Yeah. But it's uh, when the land was not good, nobody could farm it. That was one thing. Not and it went into disuse because there were such an ancient crossroads, and then, then after the Romans destroyed it, it still is a crossroads. It but still is a crossroads, but nobody cares about it. Nobody, ah. nobody wants to maintain a state. In other words, if there's no army to stop me, what do I care? So when Pharaoh of Necho, this is the guy's name, I believe. When he picks up, when he wants to go through Israel, he says to King Hezekiah um, in English, he says to Hezekiah, uh, I want to go through, let me just go through your land and we'll be at peace. And Hezekiah says, because he was a righteous king, and the, law, the Torah says that when we're righteous, no sword will even go through our land. He said, no. Ah. So far of Necho said, Hezekiah, I have no fight with you. I, I don't want to fight with you. I just want to go through. It would be easier to go through your place. So let me go through. If you don't, I will go through you, and I will destroy you. Your choice. You can do the, either do it the easy way or the hard way. Hezekiah, again, thought that he was a tzaddik, thought that everything was good. And he said, no. Ah. Went through. He uh, They shoot him. The... the Tanakh says he got shot with, with the archers. That he had shot so many, I think over 300 arrows came into him. It was like a sieve. And as he's dying, the prophet Jeremiah goes, runs over to him and he hears him saying, God was, God is right, God is right. God is just, in other words. And what was going on was that while he did have a national reform that to make everybody religious again, what he didn't realize was some people were still worshiping idols. He thought he got rid of all of that, and therefore he thought he was good, but he didn't. So that's when Pharaoh got through. Now again, if it wasn't a crossroad, why would Pharaoh of Necho even care? But that's the whole point. There was a crossroad, so he, it was an easier path is uh, to do that. So that's why you have all these kings who want to have a piece of the rock. It's like I said last time also. Yeah. It's like Washington. Yeah. Ah. You want to be part of the action. <laughs> so if, if everybody, everybody has, everybody from the U.S., all the senators have a home in Washington. They also have a home here, mm -hmm. but most of the time they're in Washington. Mm -hmm. that's all, and that's why they lose contact, by the way, <laughs> with what's going on in their own home state. They don't know what's going on because they're... Mostly in Washington. Well, you've got embassies and all that from other countries. Right, it's just the right, way. right. So everybody's there because that is the center, if you will. Even though it's not the well, it's the capital, but it's not the center of the U.S. But it really is the brain, if you will, of the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where everything's going to function out of. So Israel is also, according to the Ramban, would also have that sort of function. But I'm just saying, without the Ramban, it's a crossroads. It would make sense ah. that I would want to be there. Okay. So he's building on that and saying that they that's why they had it could be it could be i'm not sure why the ramban was supposed to say what he said mm -hmm. uh, except that there's 31 kings in israel 
Yeah. You can't have. A, yeah. He says yeah. E, you can't have thirty-one kings. There's only one king, unless you want to say that each was a landlord and called a king by that. But then you're not going to have an army. You're not going. You're going to have a couple of serfs here and there. Okay. So uh, that that's where they're holding. So okay, fine. Vayish is involved. The six. Vayishlechu on Givon. El Yeshua. So the men of Givon sent a message. I'm putting that word in, by the way. A message, because the message isn't. It's just. I'm going to translate literally, okay? Like I used to. So it's not fair what I'm doing. Vayishlechu on Givon. So the men of Givon sent El Yehoshua to Joshua El Amachana. To the camp of Gilgala, toward Gilgal, lay more saying, Al teref yadecha me'avadecha. Do not loosen your hand from your servants. Alei elenu mehera. Come up to us quickly. Voshia lanu. And save us. Va'azrenu. And help us. Ki nikpetsu elenu. Because... Uh, we, they, we have been gathered upon uh, all kol malche. I'm sorry, that's okay. Uh, all of the malche and Marie have gathered against us. Yoshvei hahar, those who dwell in the mountains. Any questions? You should have questions there. No. Hmm. Hmm. I'm hearing a lot of hmms, but I don't have any questions. I, I can almost translate this. Okay, but I want uh, any questions Keep on Keep going, it? guys. It works. This yeah. class of his works. Thank you, thank you. Anti-Alzheimer's. Too. There you go. <laughs> okay. yeah. Anti-Alzheimer's, there you go. I'm going to have to take a class, huh? There you go. Okay, again, the men of Gibbon sent... A, to Joshua, to the camp, to Gilgal, toward Gilgal, saying, do not uh, weaken your hands, don't loosen your hands from your servants, come up to us quickly, and save us and help us, because the, all the kings of the Amorites, the ones who dwe- live in the mountains, have gathered against us, assembled against us, really s- assembled, cabezas to assemble. No? No questions? I'll ask you the questions then. Because <laughs> I want you to hear some of the questions that you should be asking. It said, don't... Uh, first of all, what did they send? I didn't say. Oh. Okay, so what? that's the question. What did they send? Ah. Did they send a message? Did they send messengers? Well, how do they get this across? And, why is it, and then, of course, you have to ask another question. Why are they even bothering to send a message? The, the peace treaty was to keep you alive. We won't kill you. Since when was a peace treaty like that saying, we're going to come to rescue you? Ah. Okay? What kind of nonsense is that? We're going to rescue you. Some of them are responsible for you. Okay? Yeah. Unless it was a different type of peace treaty. But from what we understood, the peace treaty was very simple. Yeah, that one. you are our servants, you are paying our taxes, and... We won't hurt you. We won't hurt you. But it's not NATO. It's not NATO. Leave me alone. What, am I, what are you bothering me for? <laughs> I'm so happy they're attacking. I'm so uh, I'm, uh, I'm so upset they're attacking you. Good luck. Have a good day. <laughs> no okay. mutual defense. Sorry. No mutual yeah. defense. All right, that's all. I don't know why they're bothering me. Okay, that's the first question one should be asking. They, they assumed. Too. Right. They assumed. They're saying, look, we, so that's why you can argue. Don't let the hands weaken from your servant. Well, you are people. We're, you made us work for you. You can argue that, but I'm not sure I want to argue that. I want to present the questions. Okay? Because they're asking, you can ask, why are they say your servants? Then, why are they saying, hurry up? Like it's going to help? Okay? Then the word order is wrong. Save us and help us. Mm. No, it should be, help us and save us. This is common sense. Come quickly, help us. And if that doesn't help, Save us. Why are you saying save us and help us? Say, by saying save us, you've already said help us. Yeah. You understand? I'm not saying any of these would be answered. I'm saying these are the questions that you should be asking. 
So what's going on here? Why, why so much words here? Okay, so why so many words? This, this is ahead. an interesting thing because this is, I always thought the figures of speech came from the Greeks. This is called chiasmus, where you, inter you a, a chi is a X letter. Mm -hmm. And you take things and you put them opposite of the normal word order for oh. emphasis. Oh, okay. Oh. So, so what's the example here, Bill? Okay. Save us and oh, save us help us. But, uh, so I, it was striking me that maybe it, it means please save us, but if you can't save us, at least help us. Maybe that's. Oh, okay. I like that. Ah. I like that. Again, I'm not saying what the answers are. Ah. I'm not saying there are any answers yeah. to one of my questions, but that's a very good approach. I like that approach. It does stick out. Right. <laughs> ah, when I pointed out it sticks out before that, you was like, oh, oh, that's not doing that. <laughs> We were the, in the, the English translation <laughs> says, and maybe that's not a proper translation of the Hebrew. Could it be save us or at least help us? Yeah, they're translating is, it as R. Is, is the Hebrew and? I, I it's, the vote. Vote. it's the vote. It's the vote. It could be or also. Yeah, but that's, could be that's their interpretation. Ah. In other words, when, I, when I'm translating, I have, because of the V, it could be and or. It could be a lot of things. All right. So it's, uh, they're, they're saying, because they have the same problem. Ah. By the way, they ha it shows that they had the problem. Ah. What, yeah. what does it mean, save us and rescue us? It doesn't make sense. Ah. So they're, they're saying, so it must mean save us or rescue us. That's why you would have so Why did they translate it and? What they, you said or. Well, they, they say are. The translation in my book is and. Really? Okay, so you oh, have yeah. two are. Okay, so you have yeah. two translate. No, no, I believe you. Save us and help us. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's a mistranslation. No, no, no. It's, well, a, it's a right translation. Uh, those it's a proper... Those those didn't take the uh, means <laughs> and or or. or it could be or. or. Yeah, I got it. I got that. Okay, so our scroll mm -hmm. had the problem that mm -hmm. I'm presenting. What does it mean? Oh, he calls you all our scrolls here. What do you have? And save us and help us. Okay, yeah. good. So that's Jerusalem. Uh, that's the Jerusalem uh, Bible. Okay. So the Jerusalem Bible will go there. Uh, J J Judaica Press goes with and or and and, and. then you have Arsco says or because it's it's a question. How do you translate that? Again, all based upon the the, the question I'm presenting. Okay, literally it's the end. I mean, I wouldn't translate or, which I well, didn't. Well, you could translate it either way, though. Or is it one of those things, again, the context? Context. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Context. But it's, that's what you have to look at. And that's why I'm saying translation is so difficult. Mm. It really is, because the end or really yeah. does make the difference. Yeah. That's why it's so important to know the original language. At mm -hmm. least you'll know the question. Correct. At least you know in the original Hebrew, the vav could be and or or. But each but here, and. But it's normally in. Nine nine percent is in. But they want to make it make There's sense. Exceptions to the rule. Correct. Okay. Uh, this correct. might be an exception. Correct. Okay. Well, yeah. Interesting. In the translation, you got to know the original language. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You have to go through it, and you have to torture yeah, yourself yeah. as to what the, what's going Sometimes on. Sometimes it can mean but. Uh, Does that ever happen? means no. Ah, is but. I'm not sure. I don't know. Again, context. There's going to be context. Hmm. When you're looking at English, when you're looking at any other language, you're, met, you're taking that person's understanding of the text. Yeah. All we know in terms of it, it's a conjunction. That's all we know, right? Right. So if somebody's going to say, but, I have never seen it, but, yeah. if somebody would say, but, to that, okay, I, I wouldn't uh, jump, I wouldn't like if, a se like if a sentence would start uh, with the vav attached to a word. Like what? It seems, well, it's it's seems, I can't think but of that. It could be a vav conversa. Like you don't, you don't translate the vav. But, you don't translate the vav. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. It would the say, ah. It would say, ah. That's when Jim is right. Or a vow. Changes the tense of right. the word. Right. No, no you don't. I'm just saying yeah. a regular. Not the beginning. With a, with a, with a, uh, you would never start a sentence with a v. Hmm. I don't think this. I certainly not English. <coughs> but in, in, in Hebrew, yeah. I don't think you would even start with a v. In other words, well, the word in. Vayomer starts sentences. No, 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 no. Vayomer means he said. Not and he said. 
That's I understand the, that, but you do start that with the no, vowel. No, that's the vowel. what I'm you saying is you wouldn't start the sentence with the word and. All right, not in English. Not. So I don't know if in Hebrew they have a v, no. uh, whatever you know. I I, have, I don't remember seeing that. It, it could be, be on the watch part. But no, yeah. In other words, that we're using the word and. I I, I don't remember seeing yeah. that, but it could be. Because Hebrew grammar does not match up to English grammar, as we all know. <laughs> okay. But like I said, those are some of the questions you sh we could be asking. Let's see what the Malvim actually did ask, and um, see if we were anywhere on track. If not, not. Okay. So he says, Voshia, oh, so he's looking at the words, Voshia, uh, Lanu, Yasvenu, save us and help us. And he says, he explains the difference between saving and helping. The one who saves does everything. The one who helps, helps a little until, uh, but but he's making the one who is being helped the main character. Ah. And on this he says, save us, like you were saying, or at least help us a little so we can fight. That was your statement. And that's yeah. what our school is saying. That, so now our school is really giving you the mouth. The right. Yeah. But they're saying, help, save us, we want you to fight all everything for us. Ah. If you're not willing to do that, ah. at least help us so we can defeat our enemy. So there you would say, usually, or correct, or at least right help us. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that, but I'm saying our scroll is following the Malbim, and I'm not yeah. sure who. Yeah, they, they they quote him down here. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And uh, I'm not <coughs> sure who, the other ones are just going by the Hebrew, just saying what it is. Okay, fine. It's not a matter of. So, what, so what do the other ones say? Uh, if it's and, that that would just be normal translation. Oh. Oh. Save us and help us. So I don't have to explain why it's in that order. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, I like remember, I have a limited. I have my limited audience oh. on my page. I like the So <laughs> it's uh. But you may be able to find somewhere else that people make a distinction between those two terms, uh, like he's trying to do, and say, yes, this is what happened. Okay? But this is just a, a class that's going, just to show you how you have to learn these, uh, these sentences. Okay, so now we're on seven. There we go, right? Ve'ya'al Yehoshua, min Gilgal. So Joshua came up from Gilgal. Who? He, v'chol am ha'melchama imo, and all the nations of the war with him, all the nation of the war with him, v'chol gibore hechayel, and all the strong men of the, all the va strong valiant men, men of the army, strong men of the army, valiant men of the army, however you want to translate that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any questions? All the people of war with him. He's, he's talking about all the uh, 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 the soldiers of Ben Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So Joshua evidently feels that they're part of them now. That he would rush to their aid. Oh, so he decided. Right, yeah, he's coming. Up, right? Yeah. At least, at least help them. At least one or the other, right? Right. Hmm. It just shows that. We always, uh, we don't know our own limits, you know. <laughs> they showed the answer to the question. It said, uh, sent to Yoshua. Yeah, so then you would have to say, he said, presumably that's a message from messenger. Right. right, right. You would have to say one of those two things. Uh, the one thing I forgot was when he says they have gathered against me, Puzzle K, it says in the fifth. Uh, yeah, it's only uh, five kings. That's not, not the, and they're not all in the mountains. Right. So it says in, in uh, the fifth verse, it says they all gather together because this, when they gather together in this uh, this assembly, so the kings were already gathered. Um, and here it's necessary to say that they gathered opposite Israel. They're all they're only opposite Israel, but what the Giva'onim is speaking. That they came against them in agreement. That's all they're saying. Okay, Nikpatsu. When I said that, why did they use the word Nikpatsu? That was his other question. To say that they all were in agreement. That's fine. Wow. They all agreed to kill us. 
So yeah. now they're all coming up fine. And apparently, like you said, Joshua bought into it. Joshua was saying, okay, we signed the peace treaty. And we said we'd keep you alive and you would be our servants. It would make sense, by the way, if they are part of the populace, because you've accepted upon yourself the ship of Mitzvah B'nai Noah, the seven commandments of Noah, that God tells us uh, the non Jews have to follow. So if they follow, if they have already accepted that, and they're already working for the Jewish people, it would make sense that Joshua would feel some responsibility. Mm. And that's why they're calling. They were counting on that, by the way. They were definitely counting on that. Mm. And he didn't disappoint. Fine. But in uh, 8. So, Vayomer Hashem El Yehoshua. Now, again, we always have to look at these things. God says this is a God, this is a God of mercy, it's not the God of judgment, speaking, if you will. Not the attribute of judgment, it's the attribute of mercy. So, the attribute of mercy, God says to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. Why? Because I have given them into your hands. And the, for those who are, again, in the grammar class, Nitzatim is the E under the second tof is I, the Yud. Mem is them. I have given them into your hands. Okay? Actually, Ooh. hand, not hands even. Lo yamod ish mehem befanecha. No man from them will stand before you. Okay, what are the questions? Obviously, God must have talked to Joshua and told him this, otherwise he can't say that. Yeah, God spoke to Joshua, yes. That's what he's saying. God spoke to Joshua. Do not be afraid of them. Any questions? I've delivered them into your hand. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that mean? They're going to be your servant. I don't know. Delivered them into your hand means you have control over them. Right. You're actually going to defeat them in this battle. Right. Right. Okay. Not a man of them shall stand before you. You're Mm -hmm. going to kill them all? Does that mean they're not going to remain standing? They're all going to be killed by you? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, basically. And that's what it seems to be. Any other question? I I would not have recognized... uh, the team until you explain that. Okay. <laughs> there you go. The question that also can be asked, and again, I don't see an answer quickly, and I don't remember if I have the answer anymore either, is why is God telling Joshua, don't be afraid of him? Why is what? Why is God telling to Joshua, Alti Ramaham, don't be afraid of them. You have five, he's been taking on kings left and right. Well, he's been wiping out everybody. Why are you suddenly worried about these five kings getting together we're fighting the given us. They're not even fighting you. And now God is saying, "Don't." Oh, I know the answer. Okay, don't be afraid of them. I know that God had already told him. Told him. No, no, he's telling him right now. I'll tear on him. Don't be afraid. So, which means he was afraid. Oh. By the way, that means he was afraid. Why is he afraid? So when they first came into the land, so he told them, you know, that they're going to conquer this and this, and maybe Joshua needs to be reassured at this point. Why? Time. Why? Because of I? Or, um, um. Oh, here? No, I wouldn't go there. Uh-huh. I like that. I like I like where you're going, but I wouldn't have gone there. <laughs> Why else? What are the battles that Hashem is guaranteeing him? That's the hint. What are the battles that Hashem is guaranteeing nobody dies? We have two types of war. We have Milchemet Harashut, my choice of war. Milchemet Hashem. Hashem tells me I have to fight these people. I have two choices in war. I can go for territory, or I can go because Hashem told me to wipe these people out. That's it. Hashem told me to wipe out the seven nations. I have to go. I have to do what I have to do. But what if I want more territory, that's my choice. Well, this is beyond the seven nations. No, it's actually part of. But oh, what else is going on? Okay. What else is going on? Is this what type of war is it? Is this a Hashem? Because Hashem is saying, "I will deliver them into your hands." So this is Hashem's war. Don't take it to in larger territory. It's not your war. I oh, will, okay. No, I, hear, I will deliver you. I hear what you're saying. Hashem's war. But I'm asking, why is Joshua afraid? 
Then it says, Al Tiramahem, God's telling, don't be afraid of them. Which the implication is that Joshua is afraid of them. So the question has to be, why is Joshua afraid of them? So you want to tell me because it's God's war. Well, really? God didn't give him the command to run and help out Gilgal. I mean, uh, give on. He didn't say, go out and help out the non-Jewish uh, people you just took in. Well, God is saying, I... Right now I he is, right? Delivery, I, so it's God's war. I'm agreeing with you, you right now. What I'm you asking you. is, why did God have to read You're it? telling Joshua that, yes, you made the right decision. Go, go. Okay. Yeah, Joshua wasn't told to protect them. So. Correct. So he's having a whole problem. Here I am. Them. Here I am. I made this treaty. And now, And the treaty was not a good treaty. Don't forget. Wow. The treaty, uh, we were ripped off. You ripped me off. And now I have. To, now you're asking me to protect you. And of course, I have this NATO concept where I have to go and protect you because you're part of my people. <clears throat> but is this a war that I'm going to win? Because is, is it a war based upon my merits or the merits of the Jewish people? And if that's the case, we, may not, we didn't ask God this. We didn't ask God. Maybe we should be doing this. And mm -hmm. is it a war considered Milcham and Rashud or Milcham and Hashem? So I don't know what's going to happen. Here I'm putting my people into danger. I'm worried. <laughs> and maybe I don't have the merit. Maybe I sinned because, and maybe this Hashem punishing me. He did it to I. I lost 30, 36 people. 36, 70. I always forget that number. I think 36 people. I, I lost a certain amount, a certain amount of soldiers and I because I didn't act properly. Maybe this is also not acting properly. So that's why it gets constant. So I'm not so sure. Hashem says, "Al Tiramam, don't be afraid, because whenever a tzaddik, a righteous person, Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and all the way through our giants, Moshe, Hashem always says, don't be afraid of them. The question always is, what is that going to I am next to God. <laughs> what do you mean, don't be afraid? Why am I afraid of anything? Well, the answer is, because I may have sinned. And God, depending on where I am on that scale of uh, holiness, is very quick to hit. And I was, if I'm way up there and I make a slight uh, mistake, as he's from Moses, I get smashed. Okay? So if I'm on the low ranks, then I can do a lot more and get away with it. Okay? It's like the lousy kid in class. He can get away with nearly anything. But the good guy, forget it. That's going to get a chance. Yeah? Well, what I said before might not be totally accurate then, even though if Joshua had started this war. It was the other kind of a war where the person started, not Hashem. Correct. Correct. Even then, Hashem might step in and say, don't fear. Me. That's why he did not help you. Right. That's what he's so saying. So it doesn't say that this is God's war. This could be Joshua's war. Correct. That's why Joshua's afraid. And that's when Joshua, that's when Hashem has to say, don't worry. Yeah. It's already done. You just go, do what you have to do. They're in your hands. Nobody's going to stand before you. Okay, so that's that's why he has to say Al Tira Mehem. The Malbum says, I gave him to your hand. What does it say? Mikvar already. I already gave him. He's saying past tense. Because Nitzatim is past tense. Right? What do you mean I gave them? I didn't fight yet. That's the other question. That's his question. You what do you mean you gave them? You didn't give them to me. You will give them to me. They will be given into your hand. No, no. Because I already did it. And why would God say that? By the way, there's another interesting thing. Whenever God's speaking to the people like this, He says, Natati, I gave to you. You didn't give me anything yet. I still haven't received it. Yeah. But because once God has in mind that it's going to happen, it's already done. It's a, what is it saying? Faith to complete. Compl Thank you. Faith to complete. It's a done. It's a done deal. So that's related to the idea of the word becomes reality. God has just thought it. Yes. It's as good ah. as done. That's it. It's as good Correct. as having done. Good. Done Very good. Yeah. So he says, Ki -ika, because the main thing of his coming is that they gave him, it, that uh, I gave them into your hands. Fine. Then it says, no man will sin before you. It says, there is a difference between the word yit yat save, to be stationed, when you station a man before you, that they are always coming uh, to be stationed there to fight you, a standing army, as it were. And between the words, 
he, they do not stand there, which is also explained as in a sta uh, being stationed. But here, when I'm hit yet saved, this is a Krat Milchama, when I'm stationed you as to meet you in war, but they will not stand in war against you. In other words, they'll start out, they'll look like a strong army, but they're going to fall. And which uh, that's why you're going to get them. So they're going to come out strong. And then what's going to happen is they collapse. But that's already a done deal. So don't worry. Don't worry about their numbers. It's an irrelevant thing. It's mm -hmm. already taken care of. Okay? That's what God is saying to them. So that's going to the moment. So uh, verse 9. Vayavo alehem Yehoshua pito. And Joshua came upon, by the way, Vayavo is singular. It's, uh, it's not they came, it's Joshua came upon them suddenly. Kol halayla, all the night, Allah min Gilgal. He went up from the Gilgal. Hmm. From, yeah, the, from Gilgal. What's the question? Suddenly. Suddenly, good. Ah. What else? You, you don't take an army suddenly. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> good. Anywhere. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe, maybe he attacked at night. It says he went from Gilgal all night. Maybe it was still night when he attacked. Okay. He went all night. Took all night to get there. Right. Yeah, yeah, but it was be before before dawn he might have attacked. Mm -hmm. What else? Hmm. Well, yeah, it could have been like. He may have, he may have taken all night to get there, but then still had the element of surprise mm -hmm. because it hadn't become light yet. So he still suddenly yeah. okay. attacked them, yeah. even though it took them all night. Very to get good. Mm -hmm. Could position. be that. Good. Position. What else? Anything else? He said he he had ascended. Where is he going up to? Ascended. What does that mean? Gilgal was in the valley. Ah. Whenever you're going up, it means you're going to going up the mountains. Ah. It means tra travel. They traveled all night. That means he was doing it in, in the dark, so they didn't know they were coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he did it secretly. Basically. Yeah. So if right. they had lookouts, they might not be able to see him. Right. So that you're all hitting on all the commentaries here. Ah. Good. Because the Masudas David says what it's been to all night, yeah. in order that they shouldn't feel that the army was coming because they could go in secret, and therefore they would come upon them uh, suddenly. Okay? Then it's a way of. Uh, well, that's the next verse. Okay. So, and the Malbim is also saying the same thing that because they went up at night from Gilgal, so that's again, that's how they could do it suddenly, not secretly, suddenly. Okay, very good. So you're getting this good. And and by the way, I'll ask you the question, make sure, make sure you get it. Why do they say and Joshua came? Not and Joshua and the uh -huh. army came. Why is it not in the plur in the plural vayavohu alehim? He's the leader, so it's focusing on the general. Good. As long as we understand it. Fine. Because whenever the per whenever the main character is spoken about, even though he's inclusive of many people, he's still the guy. So we always go singular. Whether if it would go via vote, they came. That means that there's other people that are equal to the leader, and that would be the problem. It's like the same thing you would say, like World War Two. Uh, 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 what was it like? General uh, Eisenhower, Eisenhower hit Normandy, whatever. Right. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, yeah, so 10. Vayuhumeim Hashem Yudnei Yisrael. So Hashem confused them, as it were, confounded them before Israel. The them must be referring to the, the enemy. Vayakeim Makagadola, and he smote a great smiting. Begiv'on in Giv'on. Vayir Duvaim. And he pursued huh. them, Derech Ma'ala Beit Charon, the way of the ascent of Beit Charon. Vayah came and he smote them, Ad Azeka, the Ad Makeda. And he smote them until the place name of Azeka and until Makeda. Huh. 
Do I have any questions? So he split his army up, basically. Say? He must have split his army up to hit Gibeon and then hit the others down, down south as well at the same time. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you say, and slew them. Right. If they're all gone, why did they have to chase? Who's left to chase if they've already been slew and <laughs> killed? Mm -hmm. But they, they, they slew part of them and chased the rest of them. Okay. I guess. That's not the first time I've seen this. The Hashem confused them. I mean, you're going you're to get that a lot. But he confuses them before they go into battle and basically beats them up before they even get there. Mm -hmm. Right. That is a common thing. Yes. That is very common where, where whatever terror goes through the camp. That's how it was in the sense. If I know that a strong army, originally I came out against Givon. Okay, so I'm going to take on Givon because that's one against five. They're not, they don't have God fighting for them. Suddenly, Givon calls for reinforcements from these people that have been wiping out everybody. You can only imagine that they're not going to be too happy about that. They thought they could get rid of the enemy really quickly. We're fighting up. We're beating ourselves up, right? Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we pull in the, the United States of America, and was the all the uh, the, the power behind them. And you're thinking, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. So imagine with all the U.S. power, how God, where they, like I said, you're seeing them wipe out people, destroy, just totally destroy townships and everything else, and not take a penny. They're not getting the spoils. They're not doing it for the money. If I do it for the money, this is something too. If I do it for money, you understand me. You understand that. We can always deal with money. Once I know you're going for territory, we can negotiate that out. But if I see you just wiping everybody out and not taking anything, I don't understand you people. And that's the problem. They don't understand what's going on. So I could see them easily having problems in the camp once they know that the Bnei Israel are coming. That, and that could be part of the confusion that they're, that they're dealing with. But any other questions there? My question was always when I looked at that, how do you chase them until Azeka and then Makeda? Make up your mind. Is it, is it Azeka or Makeda? Why are you going both places? I, maybe some, uh, they didn't get all of them. They didn't get all of them, so they can't. So just say... But again, if I'm saying I chase them, I, I chase them so my kid. I got them to them. Why are you picking on this place? Okay. So, uh, the Mitsud, by the way, nobody answered that today, so. But there's always a question I've had about that. Uh, so, I says, They ran, they ran that way. And that's why they pursued them and they, they beat them up. So, what you have to take the first part is they pursue them on the way going out to Beit Haron, and there was a big smiting. Yeah. There was a big smiting, but they didn't get everybody. Yeah. You have some people yeah. who run away. So, mm -hmm. But they're not giving up, because their job is to wipe them all out. You cannot let your oh. enemy live. So they took off after them. So they took off. They have well, to... So it might be that you can't attack the whole bunch at one time, so maybe some of the enemy traveled faster than some of the rest of them. So some of them are up here, some of them are here, let's take care of these. Now we caught up with these, take care of this bunch, right. and then go on to the next bunch so we don't have to fight everybody at once. Uh, or just the other way around. Uh, those who have to get their leaves these days who are blowing them with their, uh, what the, what's that called? When you go, the leaf blower. Okay, so what happens? You, I, had, I had my fun with it. I'm going back and forth, but it's nice to see the waves of leaves, but there's always some leaf that escapes. Yeah. And there's more on the trees. You've got to do it today. No, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, tomorrow you've got to do it again. That, that's true. I'm just saying that the leaves that escape, so okay. do I have to go back and get them, or do I leave them? So Joshua wow. said, no, no, I want to clean sweep. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's it. Clean them out. That's it. Because we don't want them to come back. Because there's no, and this is what Hashem is saying, if you leave them alive, there will be thorns in your eyes. You cannot leave the enemy. They are your enemy. If they had the same opportunity, they would wipe you out. Be first. That's what Hashem is saying to them. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should have a copy of Yeshua to the president. 
Okay, yeah. okay. it's a different song. Okay. Yes. But it's uh, the Congress president doesn't have any power. Ah, that's yeah, it. Right now he doesn't. Won't. <laughs> it won't soon anyway. For the next two years. What do they call that? A lame duck president, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there, is there a word when the president's one party and all Congress is the other party? Lame duck. That, if that is a he's on the lame cold duck. is what he is. No, lame duck. Well, he's out in the cold, basically. <laughs> so they they call that a lame duck. He yeah. cannot be elected again at the end of... Lame duck term. means, yeah, he can't be elected again. Yeah. That's a, he that's can still have a second term. Right. He's in second term, so it's a lame duck. But he also is non-functional. I think. Yeah, right now, yeah. 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 yeah, he's a lame duck to no fault of his own. That's just his, where he's Okay. Yeah. Right. So now let's go on. So it says, Hashem Hislet. Oh. Roasted duck. <laughs> Roasted duck. Roasted duck. Yeah. Roasted duck. Yeah. So, uh, Yud Aleph. Okay, let's go on a little because we have to do one a little more before we can answer the major questions. So, Vayihi Benosam Mipne Yisrael. And it was when they traveled before Israel. Ahem Bemorad. Beit Haran, they were going down to Beit Haran. Hashem hishlich aleim avanim, avanim actually. And so Hashem threw upon them avanim gedolot min hashoyim, big stones oh. from the sky. Ad azeka until azeka vaya mutu, and they died. Rabim Hashem metu be'avne barad. More people died from the stones. Of hail, Hargu Bnei Yisrael Becherav, more than Bnei Yisrael killed with the sword. Okay. Any questions there? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you like that? You have I'm not gonna. That's the first time I've ever seen that. What? That's the first time I've ever seen that. I never noticed it. What? What? The, the stones. Oh, okay. I don't know why I never noticed that. I just never noticed it. Because you don't go through as slowly as, slowly as we're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> When you're reading this stuff, you just fly. Okay. Well, but it's a miracle, and I didn't even see it. There you go. Oh. So you have the hailstones coming down, killing more people than they were killed in battle. Oh, boy. That's what you call miraculous. Huh? Good timing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what you show. That's what it's like the person who was uh, supposed to be on that plane that blew up, that they blew up, and uh, that the, uh, the, nine, the 9-11 terrorists, mm-hmm. they took whatever number that plane was, that went into the towers. Mm-hmm. So there's many stories that people that were supposed to be on the plane kicked off the plane, so on and so forth, mm-hmm. and they didn't make it. So uh, actually one of them was my wife's cousin. So it uh, was supposed to be on the plane and, and, and didn't, uh, didn't get on. Mm-hmm. was all upset. Mm-hmm. And they... they and they heard, yeah. That story is very interesting because when his wife heard that the plane crashed and she knew he was on that plane, she said, oh my God, my husband's dead. And he couldn't get through to her because the ear was all messed up, these signals. And he had only set his cell phone. Yeah. Nobody yeah. has a 10 cents to put in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't even know there are pay phones left in the city. In a landline. <laughs> I don't know if they have that anymore. But he, it took him a little while to finally get through to say, I'm okay, I'm okay. You know? But there was another person that was supposed to be on the plane, okay? and he, for whatever reason, wasn't there. So he was sitting in his home. And if you remember, there was a plane that was flying and the engine fell out. This is the story. The engine yeah, yeah. fell out. Remember that story? Yeah. It was very close to that. And, and it crashed. It was in New York. He crashed through the roof, yeah. killing that guy. Oh, mm-hmm. he did his own. And so everybody was saying, wow, when God wants you, <laughs> that was such a freak accident. There's no way you could see that any other way. Kills the guy who was supposed to be on the plane. For some reason, he got off. I don't oh. know why. But well, he got killed anyway. Got killed. Another plane. Oh. The engine dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. crazy. So that's what, that's what you're looking at here. When God wants you dead, it's over. So uh, huh? this is the best. <laughs> yeah. So here you have these hailstones <laughs> that, and normally hail doesn't kill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Normally hail it hurts. Okay, fine. But there's giant stones that are coming down from the sky, and and again, I will have to stop here. But the question you have to ask is, what does it mean, Adazeka, until Azeka? 
What does it mean that they, the stones came down from the sky until Azekah and they died? What's going on there? Just say they came down and more people died from the hail than the other. That's all. What do I need Ad Azekah for? The stones didn't go on to another city and kill anybody else. They stopped there. Okay. They killed them Jim, until they I'm going to tell you like this. You need to come next week. 